thing is, we're expecting people to know Christ because they go to church. Do you not know you can go to church, you can read your Bible, you can fast and you can pray, and that don't mean that you know Christ? Because we have a Christless generation that goes to church. We tell people, well, I know that what the Bible says, but that ain't what I believe. See, that's dysfunctional. Because, see, statistics are saying that you got more people leaving the church. And Tammy begin to share some of those things. More people are, lo are leaving the church because relationships. Well, this relationship I don't like because they ain't doing this, so I'm going to just leave. I don't like because they ain't using my gifts, so I'm going to just leave. I'm going to leave because they ain't paying me no attention. But, see, the main relationship that you came should have been because of Christ. Because Christ, if Christ isn't the center of your relationship, guess what? All your relationships are going to fail. Mm -hmm. Young people, how can you expect a relationship with a young man or a young girl if you don't have a relationship with Christ? Because see, what you what the enemy was set up is, oh, well, in church it's boring. In church it don't make sense to me. But you get in that relationship with that young man. Come on here, and then he he gets angry with you, and he decide he want to hit you. He decide that you're stupid. He decide that you're too fat. He decide that your hair ain't long enough. And then he begin to murmur and complain. And just because you want to be loved, you will stay in an abusive relationship. But if you had a relationship with Christ, that relationship with Christ would tell you that that relationship that you're in is wrong. And then that's why we got to go back to relationships. Teaching our children a relationship with Christ is Christ loved us that he gave for us. Christ loves us so much that when we pray to him, he hears our prayers and he answers our prayers. He supplies our needs. He provides for us. He delivers us. He heals us. And see, when we begin to teach this to our children, we're teaching them this is how functional relationships are. That it's a give and a take. Yeah. I spend time with Christ. He turns around and spend time with me. Yeah. He, I give Christ. He turns around and he give me. But see, something is wrong with that relationship when it's one side. Yes. If you're the only one, every time you go out with your friends, they the, they the ones they always give. Something is wrong. If you always in a relationship with your friend, you always doing the encouragement, and when you need encouragement, nobody's there. Something is wrong. See, we got these dysfunctional relationships going on. Even parents, if you never tell your children you love them, something is wrong. Husband and wife, if you don't tell your spouse that you love them, something is wrong. Because see, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Love is an action word. We should be able to say, I appreciate you, mama, for you take care of me. Children, when is the last time you told your parents you appreciate them? When is the last time, mom, I'm glad, dad, I thank you for taking care of me, for keeping the water on, for keeping the food in the refrigerator. See, dysfunctional is... They supposed to do that. They my parent. No, that's not. That's ungrateful. God don't have to do what he do for us. Your parent don't have to do what they do for you. And then God is trying to teach us we got to stop being dysfunctional. And you may say, even when you start telling your children and, you, and you're not used to telling them I love you, guess what? Your flesh going to feel funny. Because you're going to say, it just feels funny. You know why? I feel? Because you're not used to doing it. But once you keep doing it, guess what? It's going to come second nature. When you start telling people, I appreciate you. I tell your spouse, I thank you for taking care of me. I thank you for putting up with me. Because see, what you're doing is letting the other person know, I'm not taking you for granted. It may not be the best with us, but I appreciate you for sticking it out. I know you felt like running because I did. But I appreciate you. See, if we're going to have healthy relationships, we got to move to that direction of being functional. Functional is going to take work. Dysfunctional don't take no work. That's good. It's easy to be mean. It's easy to be angry. It's easy to be frustrated and disappointed. But when I make up my mind, I'm going to intentional show love. 
I'm going to intentionally show love to people that dislike me. I'm going to intentionally show love to people who get on my last nerve. Why? Because I'm letting Christ work on me. Because he, I understand if I'm going to look like Christ, I got to allow him to work on me. Because I got to tell myself, you're not perfect. I got to tell myself, Alisa, you got an attitude. I got to tell myself, Alisa, you ain't acting right. You acting funny. See, this is where we got to begin to be honest with ourselves and say, I've been used to being dysfunctional. That's what one of the members said this morning. I lied to myself and said, oh, I like being by myself. Ain't nobody got to come to my house because I'm a private person. See, we lie to ourselves when we tell ourselves that. But then then when they begin to allow the power of God to come into their lives and say, you know what? I'm opening up myself to God. God is blessing me. God is healing me. Now I can show friendship to somebody else. See, because then you're duplicating what Christ did for you. Now you're turning around and you're giving Christ to somebody else. But see, if I'm angry and I'm mad, see, what's wrong is we're producing other dysfunctional people. We're producing other dysfunctional children. The mama got an attitude. The daddy got an attitude. The little children got an attitude. Everybody want, oh, that's the attitude family. The bad hmm. attitude family. Hmm. Everybody in their family mean. Everybody in their family argumental. See, those are things that we got to deal with. Because we got to begin to say, this is not normal. I'm not displaying Christ with my actions. And see, that's what God wants us to do. Sometimes you'll say, well, we're the quiet family. Don't nobody in my family have anything to say. That's a lie. We all got a voice. We all got something that we got to say. But you first got to realize that's dysfunctional. If I'm going to be like Christ, Christ opened up his mouth and said something. So that means I got to open up my mouth and I got to say something. Well, if I ain't got nothing to say, well, you get in that word of God. It'll show you a whole lot to say. Because I'm going to show you where we have been wicked thinking that we were good because we came to church. Look at it. Verse 29. He said, do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse a man for no reason when he has done no harm to you. Do not envy a violent man or choose any of his ways. For the Lord detests a perverse man, but he takes the upright into his confidence. It says the Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked. I'm going to read that to you in the Amplified. It says the curse of the Lord is in and on the house of the wicked. But he declares blessed, joyful, and favored with blessings, the home of the just and consistently righteous. What is God saying? He's saying that people, when we stay in our dysfunctional way, we become wicked. Don't get 